Hi guys, it is an exciting Thursday night here in the collapse of everything and uh, we have actually made it to February 1st, February 1st, 2024 and uh, we're just going to, uh, have we heard from Andy the Gardener in a while? Uh, we're going to hear a view from Zombie Island. A view from Zombie Island from everyone's favorite uh, doomudgeon, doomer curmudgeon. Andy the Gardener is uh, coming out of the gates uh, on February 1st. This was uh, Andy the Gardener's response to my uh, rant last night, what, me worry about nuclear winter, and in that rant, I, I mentioned, uh, a, uh, this fellow, uh, this very controversial fellow named Graham Hancock, Graham Hancock, I am a big fan of Graham Hancock, uh, he's written a lot of books about ancient civilizations. Now, uh, I really like Grant. I have a lot of respect for the man. Now, I do think there are times when, when Graham tends to, is the term, jump the shark just a little bit. He's not nearly as bad as that idiot on Ancient Aliens by any means, but Graham can reach a, a conclusion based on some fairly flimsy evidence, but he is, uh, he, he does get the mind to thinking about ancient civilizations and I think some of the problem, and so of course, for a rationalist left-brainer like uh, Andy the Gardener, uh, obviously people like Graham Hancock are absolute anathema. Uh, I, I think some of the problem that, uh, that left-brainers like Andy uh, who don't think out of the box. Uh, well, you would see a lot of people would think that Andy the Gardener thinks out of the box. No, a a Andy the Gardener, uh, everything he's getting ready to say is inside the box. But uh, I, I think a lot of the problem that people have with uh, Graham Hancock might be the definition of exactly what civilization means. So I don't know. We're gonna. I would be curious to hear just Graham Hancock's definition of the word civilization. But uh, Andy the Gardener is not a fan of Graham Hancock, but that really uh, has nothing to do with his comment. Uh, take it away, Andy the Gardener. <clears throat> Graham Hancock is a purveyor of pseudoscientific twaddle. That is why he is quite popular with a significant minority. The fact is there were no civilizations prior to about 10,000 years ago. No agriculture and no large gloms of settled humans. There were only about a million humans back then, which was entirely unsustainable, given that they killed off what sustained them. It seems like a reasonable definition, uh, anyway, of, uh, I guess he's talking about the definition of sustainable uh, or unsustainable. Humans mostly milled about Doggerland. Doggerland is one of these uh, civilizations, whether it was a village of 2,000 people or 
off the coast of Europe, which is underwater right now. Um, so I guess Andy the gardener is an anthropologist. Uh, I, I, you know, and, and Graham Hancock is not an anthropologist. He's an economist, by the way. Uh, but Andy the gardener is an anthropologist, apparently. So uh, I, I believe Andy as much as I believe uh, Graham Hancock. I mean, all joking aside, uh, humans simply milled about Doggerland, etc., feasting on the mammoths and other megafauna they eventually made, a, made extinct. Drew a few pictures to show what they exterminated. Only after they completed that phase, you know, exterminating, exterminating the megafauna everywhere they went, as soon as they completed that phase and burned their bridges, did they turn semi-cancerous. Nice! I could be wrong on this one, but I don't fear nuclear war that much. He goes from uh, ancient civilizations uh, in, 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 into nuclear war, uh, which was a lot of what my rant was about. Okay, I could be wrong on this one. We will find out soon, soon, Annie, whether you're wrong or not. But I don't fear nuclear war that much. Nukes stop nuclear war. <clears throat> Always have. And war in general. Dying themselves. Dying themselves has always given leaders pause for thought. They will, no doubt, allow the horrific period of global peace and prosperity to continue unabated until the job is done. And I include the 20th century in that. Such piffling wars, relatively speaking, what was the toll compared to the Billions that lived to exponentially breed. The last 200 years have wit witnessed a far worse war. A war on nature. The unusual and horrific peace that unfolded, aided and abetted by the mega-cancer's clever invention of a nuclear threat, allows the peace necessary to attempt a full-on conversion of all life on Earth to the industrial cancer system. The real war is occurring everywhere, all the time. The mega-cancer needs itself to be at nominal peace with itself to feed and grow forever. The system will maintain peaceful relations with itself past the point where individual cancer tribes have anything to fight over or means to do so. Starvation takes its toll, takes the fight out of animals and nations, when all is used up, there is nothing to fight for. Nations will look inwards and feed on their own tissues as each descends into its own personal hell and completes the plague cycle. It takes resources to maintain a nuclear arsenal, cheaper to pretend you've got one as they rust away. The mega-cancer goes out with a whimper, not a bang, but I could be wrong. Never fear, though. My message is not of hope. My message is not of hope. It just creates more leeway for other, more subtle 
deserving horrors over a longer period, nuclear war will be a terrible waste. <laughs> yes, it will. Nuclear war will be a terrible waste. Oh, the mega cancer does not need nuclear weapons to destroy this planet. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, but we're going to do just fine doing what humans do. You do not need nuclear bombs. All you need to do is do what humans do. But uh, there's no danger of me doing that tonight. Uh -uh. And uh, even if I were, I would be firing blanks. Oh, well, thank you, Andy the Gardener, for straightening us out on the the threat of nuclear war. And with that, what is on the menu? Is it egg rolls? Uh, another night in Doomsday Trailer begins. Bye, guys.